Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and I'm on a little project. I, I have a truck. It's a, an older model Mazda uh, B2600 uh, four-wheel drive pickup truck that I bought uh, uh, inexpensively. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of going through it. There's nothing really wrong with the motor or transmission, but underneath, uh, you know, it had some rust, and so I you know, did some rust treatment and painted a lot underneath and started refurbishing it uh, kind of from the ground up. And uh, one of the things I did was uh, refurbish the existing exhaust system. And, uh, you know, it, it it had suffered quite a bit. And uh, a regular uh, mild steel uh, uh, exhaust system will rust from the inside out. So, you know, I took it down and I welded up and plugged as many holes as I could. And you know, it, it did okay for about a year or so, but, uh, you know, I knew I'd have to uh, go back in before too long and uh, uh, replace much of that. And so uh, that's what I've done uh, just recently. I've gone back in there, I've taken the old one, thrown it away, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was spent. And uh, since I do a little welding, I like to fabricate uh, stuff, I uh, went ahead and uh, started uh, purchasing some stainless steel tubing and mufflers and, and clamps and things like that. And I, uh, I've uh, just finished the uh, main segment of the stainless steel exhaust system and I've put it in the truck. The truck is right behind me. Let me show it to you. It's a 1992. Mazda B2600, not a bad looking truck, but uh, you know, it's uh, well over 20 years old. So, this is what I've done so far. Stainless steel, I put a nice heavy uh, stainless flange and some hangers with some uh, stainless strap there. And uh, this is uh, two and a half uh, inch tubing here. This is the segment I, I actually did before when I knew I'd have to go back in. I did this in stainless steel knowing that I'd come back and, and finish uh, the rest in stainless. Okay, here we are. And this is the interim step. Uh, we're reading about 65, 67 uh, dB uh, at the curbside, uh, about six foot away where I took the uh, same uh, original factory measurement from on my Android phone with this little free app that measures uh, decibel ratings and uh, it's about 10, 10 points above where the factory was at 65, 63, 62 and so uh, it's a little louder uh, without a resonator but we're going to put a resonator on so uh, this is just a, a little gauge, uh, you know, if we would have went without the resonator. So here it is, uh, without the resonator. If anybody else is in this uh, similar uh, position to, uh, you know, maybe want to do their own uh, exhaust system, this is the first one I've ever done, stainless steel, or, or any other kind of steel exhaust system. My first uh, uh, exhaust system, and that's what I recommend if you're going to, do it yourself you might as well go stainless you know because uh, it's a weak link they just uh, especially if you've got snow in your area or like on a four-wheel drive truck you're probably going to get into some of that stuff so go stainless and uh, plus stainless is is you know cool if, if you like to weld you, you undoubtedly like stainless it's just uh, it's just great you don't have to finish it or cover it or anything so anyway and it looks good it's not going to rust and uh, so that's where I'm at I've got the muffler this is a uh, Magnaflow XL model it's not the super high performance loud uh, ones but uh, it has a good sound you know it sounds performance and already in park uh, just hitting the throttle I think uh, there's a little better, better uh, uh, throttle response and uh, you know you probably get a little Im improved performance maybe a little better gas mileage especially with less uh, back pressure you'll probably just automatically start training yourself to let off the gas sooner so you get more of that coasting ability and that'll save a little little gas mileage even if 
technically it doesn't produce more gas mileage inherently. It, it'll train you to drive maybe a little differently, and so that'll in, increase some gas mileage. Okay, I'm back, and uh, happily the uh, parts I was waiting uh, for to arrive next week came early. It's the weekend, so I have the parts I need now to uh, carry on and complete the job. I, I don't know if I'll complete it all this weekend. It's Saturday now, so hmm, maybe. But uh, let me show you, this is the uh, resonator, the uh, vibrant, ultra-quiet resonator, and it's uh, brilliant, beautiful. It's got a highly polished uh, stainless steel finish, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm going to take my uh, little orbital sander and scuff it up and uh, give it a, a, a brushed finish like the rest of the uh, system, so it'll all match up. But uh, this... Uh, uh, undoubtedly came from China and it's brilliant um, the uh, wall thickness is a little thinner than uh, the typical stuff I'm using for the rest of the tubing which it's not a bad thing it just is what it is and uh, so I'm gonna be a little mindful about how I uh, uh, have the hangers mounted you know you know we'll talk a little bit about uh, design or layout here. Uh, I'm doing all the welding indoors, so you know I'm a little lazy. I don't want to uh, drag out my uh, welding equipment. Uh, you know, I can, it's a 220 volt uh, inverter uh, welder and uh, I usually use TIG uh, welding process, but uh, I don't like to drag it all the way out here, put on the extension and climb under the truck I, I don't need to I can take the parts down I do my welding indoors the TIG process is uh, uh, very nice for welding indoors there's no spatter no fumes to speak of and uh, it works great and so that's how I like to do it but uh, if you remember on the earlier segment how the uh, muffler how I had those uh, hangers mounted I'm not going to do it in the same manner as I did the uh, muffler. On the muffler, I chose the muffler because uh, it had uh, offset inlet and outlet uh, uh, inserts. So, you know, it came in down on one end and it came out on the other end. Now you can see this is center to center. Straight through, center to center. There's no uh, uh, stepping up or turning. But that's why I, I chose that uh, muffler is because I wanted to get a rise so the muffler would help help the uh, tubing go from down low to up high so I could jump over that uh, rear axle. And also I turned it a little bit so I could get a turn and a rise uh, so I wouldn't have uh, any uh, bent tubing to speak of. And so there is no bent tubing uh, except for this uh, little tailpipe transition. The muffler was able to uh, give me uh, what I wanted, that rise and a turn. More than I originally planned, but no big deal. There might even be a benefit to it, I don't know. It's a little more costly, the tubing at three inches and the mufflers and things like that undoubtedly cost just a tad more, but here it is. And, and uh, it worked well because you know we're talking about a an import uh, truck and they're they've got to be probably the easiest thing to do an exhaust system you know without so many t uh, turns and bends because it's an inline straight uh, four-cylinder motor all the uh, manifolds dump into one uh, transition and they go straight back and so it's pretty easy and so that might have had a lot to do with me wanting to do this in the first place because it was so easy. I've never done one of these before and uh, will probably be the only one I ever do. So I want to do a good job because this will be the only one I ever do undoubtedly. I'm 54 years old and uh, you know I probably got another 20-25 years of existence or breathing air so you know I'm going to do this one nice so uh, the way I want it. And, uh, but I want to make it easy for myself too. And so that uh, uh, double offset muffler, uh, you know, helped me a lot. Okay, here we are in my interior space where uh, the welding goes on. Uh, as you can see, this is, uh, you know, a typical uh, living uh, arrangement, but uh, yet 
right in that room right there. It's a uh, laundry room, pantry type area, very small, about the size of a small bathroom, is where I do my work uh, and, and weld indoors. Uh, the grinding I'll do outside and, uh, you know, you might notice this uh, electric hand cycle right here. It uh, came right out of that uh, little little shop. So it's uh, very modest and, uh, you know, it just goes to show that, uh, you know, anybody who, you know, does a little bit of welding can get it done even in cramped spaces. And, uh, you know, I'm just a novice at, uh, you know, auto mechanics and, and uh, stuff like that. And this is my first uh, exhaust system and it's stainless steel. So, uh, you know, I'm having fun with it and I'll just show you uh, uh, where it happens and uh, what equipment I use. It's, it's nothing fancy, but... Uh, this is the uh, the welder right here. It's uh, an inverter welder, and uh, it's great. It's uh, Chinese. God bless the Chinese. Uh, uh, this uh, will do uh, TIG stick, and uh, there's actually a uh, plasma cutter built into it. So you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. I think I paid about 500 bucks for this, and it's uh, well worth it. Um. Here's a little table where I do uh, some of the work. You can see I got this uh, resonator tacked up already. And you may notice that uh, I put a little slope into it. There's a little bit of a kink. I'm not uh, letting the uh, tubing uh, continue out uh, uh, perfectly straight. I want a little curvature there. And I'll do the same on the other end here. I'll, I'll uh, uh, do that same little curve uh, on... Uh, uh, both sides of that so I can get around a uh, spare tire that's mounted up there. I'm at the tail end of course and uh, we'll just peer underneath here for a minute. As you can see there's the resonator and a little further on is the muffler and it's kind of diagonal angle. And that's part of my uh, kind of mentality uh, about doing this is few turns, as few seams as possible. And uh, so it's, you know, not uh, welded up like a, a Frankenstein project with a lot of breaks. And, and uh, when I weld this up, I'll uh, undoubtedly uh, grind it down and use the uh, flap disc and smooth it out and then run the uh, sander over it because you know, there's already a seam right here from the factory, and that's tucked way up in there. And so I was glad there was no turns to speak of. Uh, and uh, the uh, factory uh, tailpipe had a 90-degree bend. It turned pretty abruptly, and I kind of softened this with the 45. And hopefully I'll be able to get it to uh, hit in the same place. But... Okay, here we are on uh, that tubing. Uh, this tubing... Uh is a, uh, a butt weld. As you can see, it just butts up one to the other. The other welds were uh, uh, lap welds and, uh, you know, butt welding, uh, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful about burn through and undoubtedly there's some underneath here. It won't be smooth underneath because uh, they just butt right up against each other and uh, the heat does transfer through. But, uh, oh, you know, this piece and this piece were from the same uh, uh, place, uh, the same metal shop, so they butted up uh, perfectly. I haven't changed the hangers uh, on any of the existing uh, ones yet, uh, and I won't on this one either, but uh, unlike the uh, muffler, the way I hung it was I took uh, some of this uh, stainless strap I had and I wrapped it around and almost pulled it tight like a bow and where it, it crossed over I welded it there too so you know it, it hung pretty much like this but uh, the muffler had that heavier wall thickness and in the muffler there were two uh, uh, walls uh, interior to it so that strengthened it, it even further they were uh, uh, spot welded from from the inside before they sealed it up and I could tell right down the middle was uh, an extra, uh, uh, you know, strength. And uh, so, but on this one, it's got a thinner wall thickness. There don't, there don't uh, appear to be any uh, interior walls to it. 
So I'm not going to do it the same way. I'm not going to try to tack into this or hang it here, you know, because this bouncing up and down with the, the rubber hangers, you know, it could dent it like a tin can. I, probably not. But uh, that's what I recommend. It's not tap, tapping onto this for those reasons. Uh, the old uh, uh, resonator that was here had uh, a, a cross piece. It was... Uh, round uh, bar uh, stock and it was uh, tacked across here which you know this is where more strength is in the corners and uh, I suppose you could come around here I thought about that uh, for the muffler but uh, I don't know it just occurred to me that grabbing it in the center would be a good balancing and you know on the uh, muffler I tacked it on the side and the side and the bottom so you know, like an egg, you know, it's it's strong from uh, top to bottom, but from side to side, you know, you can break it with two fingers. But top to bottom, I think it's almost impossible to crack an egg that way. But side to side, not so much. Okay, so here's that tubing with the uh, two uh, joints, butt joints, and this is uh, more, again, uh, what I was mentioning about nearly imperceptible. You know, that's what I, I was going for here, and there's this one's a little more detectable here. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm happy. Uh, they look uh, good, uh, ground down, and uh, kind of a brushed finish. And, uh, you know, if I left those two welds uh, just the way they were, you know, it would be kind of a more of a Frankenstein look with welds and joints and seams all up and down this. Because, like I said, that... Uh, little uh, mandrel bent 45 degree turn there was uh, you know it only had about six inch legs on each end and maybe if I knew uh, uh, what I would uh, be wanting uh, uh, for the length of those legs I could have ordered one uh, uh, just this way it would have been perfectly seamless but uh, you know there are two seams and that's usually how they come if I bought this stuff off Amazon uh, not directly from Amazon I save uh, paying uh, sales tax by choosing uh, almost always uh, uh, another buying uh, option uh, uh, from a source other than uh, Amazon and uh, this came from uh, a metal shop somewhere I forget where but anyway uh, yeah I'm liking it and uh, you know there's some burn through in the tubing but not too bad let me see if I can pop this up and if you can see any of that burn through catch some light but it's not too bad yeah, you see that little lip and seam inside there? That's what you get when you, uh, you know, do a, a, a butt weld on tubing like this. They just butt together and you're going to uh, uh, weld it on the outside. And underneath, you know, you're going to get a little little slag, a little seam, a little, little burn through. So it's unavoidable. But uh, now I've got uh, one more major weld. Uh, I'm back and uh, I just zipped up this uh, little section here. And uh, I just want to mention uh, for any of you guys uh, who maybe aren't, uh, you know, real adept at welding. I'm not an expert, but uh, remember, like I said, on the, the tubing was thicker walled than what uh, the resonator came with. So I directed my filler over here because it can the the heavier uh, wall tubing can take the heat better and also remember we put that little bit of a kink in it so it uh, we're going to get some curvature and uh, that uh, will ramp up to the uh, the lip of the resonator so you know I, I filled more towards the the one side and uh, then I uh, gave it a hot pass without the filler rod, just with the, uh, the torch or the uh, electrode going around it. And I put a, a kind of a, an oval pattern around and around to kind of lay down that, to give it a, a smoother transition going up there. And that's where we're going to want to do the, well, or the uh, grinding, too, is on this side. We want to stay away from this thinner walled uh, uh, side and uh, all the heat, all the filler, all the grinding is going to tend to be on this uh, uh, heavier side. So, uh, you know, that's how I did it. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you can see my welding prowess there, but, you know, it's nothing fancy, but uh, that's uh, how I'm doing it. And uh, when I uh, grind this off and run the uh, uh, 
orbital sander over this with some coarse uh, sandpaper. It'll give it a, uh, a brushed uh, metal finish and it'll be almost imperceptible. And, and that's what I'm going for. This is what I mean by nearly imperceptible after uh, grinding uh, uh, that weld down and using the flap disc and a, a quick uh, 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 once over with uh, a coarse grit uh, uh, paper on the uh, orbital uh, sander. That's what you end up with. Nearly imperceptible, I think, and that's what I've done uh, throughout uh, so far. And so I'm going to just keep rolling with it. I'm not trying to make it impossible to detect, but, uh, you know, uh, under the truck there, this is nearly Im imperceptible. And uh, this, like I mentioned, is where the uh, hanger is going to go up on. I'm going to mount it right down below here. But for you guys who do your own welding, uh, you know, maybe you've done some welding and this isn't too hard to, to weld on stainless steel is great I, I like it but uh, if you've never done it uh, don't be afraid just if you're using a, a MIG welder just get a, a spool of stainless uh, uh, filler and uh, even a stick welder I believe you can find uh, stainless rods so uh, you know if if that's uh, the, the kind of equipment you got you can still do it uh, but stainless steel doesn't uh, cut with a cutting torch, uh, interestingly. It uh, has enough nickel or chromium in it that uh, uh, its melting temperature is higher. So you can't use a, a cutting torch and cut this. I, uh, I've been cutting uh, everything, of course, uh, with a grinder. I, I have a plasma cutter that will cut it. Uh, but again, like I say, I don't like to drag that equipment out. I'll just uh, put this in the vise, and draw a line, and use the grinder and cut it works great. I thought uh, when I mentioned the uh, cutting of the tubing you just draw a line and, and cut uh, with your uh, angle grinder there I thought well you know maybe I ought to just go ahead and show you uh, th those steps you know if if there's any old pros watching this you know they don't need to see this this wasn't really meant to be an exhaustive step-by-step uh, -step, uh, how-to guide on building an, an exhaust system but uh, you know that one step uh, for for the uh, you know the starters uh, might uh, might find it uh, helpful. So anyway, uh, if you've got a grinder like this or, or get one uh, uh, soon, you know these things spin pretty fast. They're uh, over 10,000 RPMs, I believe. So uh, use uh, care uh, and. Uh, you know, there's your glasses, uh, have some good eye protection, and I'll just show you uh, my typical uh, method of cutting this uh, stainless tubing, and, uh, you know, the old pros probably uh, uh, have a pipe wrap uh, laying around. I've got one, but, you know, you got to unfurl it. They're kind of long, so uh, most often for just this simple uh, small tubing here, I'll just use a, a sheet of paper and fold it over and uh, do a pipe wrap right around it and uh, line them up. As you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Line it up, draw your line all the way around, and then get to cutting. So anyway, here we go, and uh, I'll usually uh, run it like this, and uh, tend not to uh, rest against the guard here. I'll just uh, kind of keep it floating so I can kind of feel where the resistance in the tug is coming from, but. I've seen guys kind of rest it on here and do it like that. I kind of don't like that method because, you know, if you get a bind, you could split one of these blades off, and uh, I've never had it happen, but I just tend to do it that way. So, uh, you know, if you've got a better method, but uh, let me see if... that rocking motion that just lets me know where it's going and it won't bind up uh, uh, in the uh, slot there so that's the method I like and you know of course I'm just going to rotate this around until it's all done so you get the picture that's how to cut stainless steel uh, it doesn't cut with a torch so uh, you know this is a brilliant way to do it you just get you a little cutting blade a little thin one and uh, it cuts like butter pretty much okay I'm and the uh, a three inch inlet tubing will really be more than that. It'll have a three inch inside diameter. So you see that they 
they fit in, you know, quite well. So don't worry about, oh, is it is it more or less on which end? If you get three inch tubing like this, it'll go into a three inch muffler uh, outlet. And then these uh, clamps, I like these uh, Walker clamps better than others I've seen on Amazon because uh, they have the uh, threads built in. There's not a nut on the other side, so you don't have to worry about holding it behind. It's just one wrench and, and it'll do it. I'm back and I've completed the second half, the last half of the exhaust system. Here it is. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, seemingly seamless, uh, except for the, uh, the one clamp here. And uh, back of the catalytic converter, that's all there is. There's just this one clamp, and it has a real kind of seemingly seamless uh, transition between uh, the two uh, uh, tubings. And this mates up right up to the muffler. And uh, there is one uh, uh, point uh, in, I guess, uh, muffler uh, manufacturing is that from the uh, back of the muffler out to the tailpipe uh, to be avoided is the 66 inch mark and uh, apparently that is a, a magical place where uh, you know if you get too close to that 66 I don't know how close uh, but you know they say you can go beyond it or uh, short of it and, and be okay but uh, right around 66 inches is where there is a, a tendency uh, uh, for a drone sound to develop and you know you'll hear some of those uh, vehicles these kids put on these mufflers and stuff and oh they, they whir and like a, a plane in the sky it's just uh, not a not a nice thing to have and you know this actually is close to that 66 inch mark but I've installed this and uh, uh, it doesn't have it and it actually sounds uh, quite good and I'm very happy I uh, decided to uh, put on this resonator because it made all the difference uh, it, it didn't sound bad without it but uh, I took a reading and, and you'll see uh, uh, after I install this how much better uh, uh, I, and I certainly do like it and uh, like I said it's seemingly seamless you know you can detect these uh, areas where the welds uh, either uh, in the uh, lab joints or button up uh, uh, welds uh, were done and uh, I suppose I'll just uh, mention uh, a little uh, production recap in that uh, how much time and money it took and if that's uh, uh, you know something that you'd want to do I don't know uh, for me it was practical to do this because you know I had the equipment here and uh, not only that uh, I'm always looking for uh, uh, opportunities to when I spend my money to deny these uh, hostile organizations and criminal organizations you know the state state organizations the federal state and their political subdivisions like counties and cities uh, you know which uh, involuntarily impose uh, taxes and, and things that uh, you know you have no choice about you know you, you're stuck they, they've got you they've got a monopoly on the use of force and uh, you know it's it's difficult to find ways around those but uh, when you buy things out of uh, you know an out-of-state source like I did uh, online or through mail order you can do do those things you can buy things tax-free so that's uh, uh, always a, a reason that I uh, uh, have to make decisions about you know not supporting these criminal organizations by spending my money where they don't get any revenue for doing nothing and so that's why it was feasible for me to do it uh, it was not only cost effective for me because you know nobody is going to be able to produce this kind of work with these kind of materials uh, for what I've done it for uh, you know I mean I'm talking about people for a profit you're not going to be able to buy this and uh, it's cost me about four hundred dollars and I include in that even the cost of uh, like the argon gas that I, I used on the welder there's I figured about uh, uh, 
100 cubic feet, and that's about 25 bucks just in gas. But uh, other than that, uh, it, it didn't cost that much. I, I think it was a good value. Here's a quick peek from the side. Go under the wheel well here a minute. You can see the muffler and resonator from this angle. And here we are beginning uh, at the uh, catalytic converter. And uh, I refurbished this a little bit and put uh, a stainless steel flange at, at the catalytic converter and a matching one uh, uh, where the uh, system begins. And you know, they usually call these cat back system, everything beyond the uh, catalytic litic converter is uh, is the new system and this little uh, section uh, I put about a year ago on uh, and it's stainless steel I knew uh, that I'd continue at some later time with stainless and then uh, I forgot that uh, I had already necked it up to uh, two and a half inches from the uh, two inch uh, uh, factory so uh, you know I just uh, thought oh it's two and a half down there so I want to neck it up uh, 25 percent to three inches but no it, it was two inches and i went to three inches so i actually uh enlarged the tubing by 50 percent which uh you know wasn't a problem but tubing's a little more costly and the mufflers and and stuff with the larger inlets uh probably just a tad more costly too so you know you don't have to probably ramp it up to uh 50 percent over the uh, stock tubing but it wasn't a problem so uh, let me uh, change a position and uh, so you can see the uh, rubber mounts how uh, you know sturdy they are and how much give there is okay, there's one of the hangers right after the uh, catalytic converter and there's that uh, crisscross one this is right at the muffler and uh, I'll give it a little tug I don't know how accurately you can see there's another one right there yeah there it is and there's one at the tailpipe as well let's see if I can get up under there yeah you can see it but uh, I'll wiggle I'll try to hold the camera steady put it on the tripod here for a second all right I got both hands on the uh, system now you can see I'm wiggling the tailpipe both ways up and down side to side and doesn't seem to knock on anything it's kind of close to that uh, leaf spring mount though but I think it'll be okay but uh, you know I'm not sure what the the tension uh, is ideal but uh, on a factory uh, unit I just followed the same pattern I used the same exist existing uh, hangers and uh, and layout but uh, you know if you were a real off-roader you might want to put a, a few more uh, rubber mounts and hangers uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm liking it. So there it is. Uh, the look from underneath. One last peek, maybe from up top. There's the uh, clamp. I really like these clamps. There's no bolt uh, or nut holding it uh, from behind, so you just tighten one side, one wrench. All right, so maybe we'll get to the uh, sound analysis. Four speed automatic, it shifts uh, at low RPMs, maybe about 2,000 RPMs, uh, unless you're mashing on the throttle. So, you know, it's not going to be a loud vehicle as long as you're not hot rodding it. But uh, I believe uh, at uh, highway speeds, if you mash down on the throttle, you know, there's a throttle position indicator undoubtedly on the truck that steps it down into the lower gear you get faster rpms and so you'll be able to hear this baby uh kick up a little bit and announce that uh, you know you're passing on the highway or something you know and i've run this thing out it uh, the performance is good i dig the sound and uh, yeah i'm liking it the uh, throttle response seems great so uh 
you know, it's it's subjective. These are all subjective uh, things, but uh, uh, I think you'll uh, like the sound too. It's uh, it's got a, an aftermarket sound to it. It's not loud. It has a, a I I think a real clean, throaty, low, uh, but a hushed tone. It you know when you let off the throttle, it has a little bit of rumble and growl. It's 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 pretty darn cool, I think. So let me get to it. Well, that's pretty quiet to me. That's that idle. That's about 7,800. such a way that people actually like it the longer it uh, uh, burns in or breaks in. So uh, the sound may, may change uh, uh, some, but uh, already I'm digging it. 